Good afternoon, dear friends. We now begin our discussion. Our subject matter of discussion is digital development, how to keep up the pace. And I shall duly become with the introduction of our panelists, if some of you don't know it, following the alphabetical order. Herman Graf, chairman of the board of directors of Zver. You know, one of my favorite uh, characters they find in German Oscarovich is that he can see the shapes of even the most distant future, provoking us all to expand our horizons. And very often he turns out to be right. Next, Andrei Kostin, president and the chairman of the board of VTB. The unique view is that he always sees the drawbacks and he always has working ideas how to prove it. Whereas Andrei говорит is speaking about the thing that we never thought about. Uh, Andrei is always speaking about the ideas that everybody is thinking about, but not Mikhail daring Eduardovich to Asievsky, speak President out. Mikhail Osayevsky, President of Rostelecom. Um, Mikhail and myself worked together in Ministry for Economic Development in my time, not for a long period of time. And I remember him being assigned to a very explosive project to reform the government procurement. And I have a very vivid remembrance that the only person who never felt victim to emotions, never heated up, but he was always confident that he would do everything, everything completely. That was him. Currently, he's got a much more complicated area, but I'm sure that he will prove that. Sergei Vladimirovich Khotimsky. Sergei Khotimsky. Sovcombank. First deputy chairman. Можно сказать, воплощение предпринимательской инициативы. Свой бизнес открыл студенческие годы. Когда в банковском бизнесе Совкомбанк начал очень быстро расти, это было в те годы, когда многие просто банкиры хотели отойти от дел, видимо, и наш политика получила лицензию, как-то на это настраивала. Появилось даже определение усталой банки, но это не про Совкомбанк. И мы видим, насколько его основатели были наверное, разные Максут Maksud Igorevich has been involved in professional digitalization project for the government when nobody believed in the success of it because everyone was thinking that government services and the government systems really got boggled down in the past. But the fact that the government sector today becomes the flagship and the trailblazer in digitalization is exactly because someone we know of in his time decided not to remain inactive, it was proactive. Let's begin with our agenda. I think it's quite obvious, and everybody admits it, that Russia is one of the acknowledged leaders in digitalization in different areas, and particularly in finance. And so our takeoff, many explained by the fact that we started later than others, that we learned from the mistakes in other countries, we started, we improved technologies, and no secret, many solutions were based on foreign technologies, but most importantly is that our great talented people in the availability of finance became the launch pad for such a digital leap. And many today believe that indeed we took that leap, but there are sanctions, external restrictions, and so the question is, aren't we up against the stone wall? And there are pessimistic and optimistic people, the optimistic one believe that we can do anything Anything, we can do anything. The pessimistic one are saying everything is related to technology and the international competitional incentives, so we won't be able to do it on our own. 
So I think that our speakers will be able to undertake a bit of a discourse into that topic because all of them have been demonstrating the ability to overcome very complicated crises and start everything from scratch. And I believe that the latter is much more difficult than overcoming crises. So let's begin with this uh, issue. Is it possible, and most importantly, how we can keep up the pace that we've been able to generate and what we can do it uh, upon what we can rely to achieve it. My first question is to Maksud. Uh, IT industries are going through blow after blow, sanctions, um, a uh, drain of experts, cyber attacks on our activities and national digital infrastructure, more sanctions than coming in. But at the same time, we can see that the Ministry of Digital Communication very quickly came out with uh, support measures we see that the import substitution that many have been talking about is not just the lip service because every uh, many are aware that import substitution and producing your own ways and solutions is the way to survive and develop all these measures help one to be resilient but What's next? What's your take on this situation? What's our strengths and our weaknesses? And what else needs to be done in order to create a solid, um, resilient um, sector of financial services and product because financial industry really depends upon it? Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I, I should agree that uh, all of our issues that we get here to discuss and the agenda are quite uh, complex and uh, today our industry is going through difficult times and this industry is about people in the first place and the way they feel defines the future of digitalization and technology and everything and the extent to which they are sure of uh, their tomorrow and the extent to which they related to this country and this country's economics really define many things. I'm very happy to see that we've got more optimistically inclined people than pessimistically ones because for many the kind of tribulations that we are currently being confronted by entails new opportunities because so quite often when I speak to the companies and the leaders in our digital economy of course many are saying that yes it is tough but on the other hand it's a happy thing because in many cases in the past it was difficult to compete against foreign made solutions you know that there is a whole set of measures that we try to initiate related to setting up new incentives for the Russian companies to buy the Russian technologies Russian developments overnight these niches have been made vacant and in many ways this is a challenge to our industry of course new opportunities as well to fill these issues. Of course, this is not an easy situation, but at the same time, we see that many companies are still better off because of it. We see that uh, the fact that the big tax, uh, a lot of them left this market, we see that the Russian IT giants are becoming bigger, and if the current trends sustain, I do say that we stand a good chance to uh, make the most of it. Of course, uh, it's a different matter that we've got other niches where we don't have any well-established technology and mature products in the first place that goes for hardware and uh, parts. Um, with software, everything is quite all right. And actually, I should say that uh, uh, it's a tribute to the financial sector because the financial sector was pushing forward the Russian software development. Why? Because it became the foundation uh, for the financial organizations and the banks to compete upon. But of course, our main challenges are in the area of hardware processes and parts and the basic stations. Uh, I think that these are the most vulnerable niches. Um, the more complex and specific uh, a device is, uh, than uh, it generally became. It is less available to us, and consequently, uh, the cost is uh, higher. So what will be our response as the government to this challenge? That's what will be a definitive thing. But I see there is a cautious optimism. and Many believe that it's time to go into the new niches. But on the part of the government, the most important thing is to create an institutional environment, the kind of regime within which our developers and our IT companies will fail. 
confidence in the future because there is a market for them. So the important thing right now to calm the people down to allow them to work uh, calmly and develop these new niches. Yeah, thank you very much. I do say that many see that the niches have been made vacant, but the question is about how and with what we can fill them. You mentioned the software, uh, of course, uh, uh, the concern for the hardware and the components uh, remains, and many decisions and solutions in the business uh, financial sector will depend upon how we deal with it. I hope that the government will find find ways to tackle this problem. My question is to German Graf. The Spare Bank has been and remains one of the leaders of digitalization. You've got your own platform, your own business solutions, your own cloud infrastructure, even two supercomputers, which um, have been rated in the top 500 most powerful supercomputers in the world. But at the same time, we see the way current situation disrupts business models in many companies and banks uh, as well. How do you see the current business development priorities? Would you agree that uh, the bat you put on a uh, technology really is justified in terms of your development, considering the current restrictions? Some things we're able to create fast and on our own. Other things will require time. So what's your view um, or the technologies in your business. And could you also say digitalization and introduction of the technologies in spare? Has it really helped you to pass or navigate through the current crisis? Uh, what um, really helped uh, amidst all of those solutions? And what's your recipe of being able to pass through the crisis of such a scale? Thank you very much for your question. It doesn't seem to me that the business models have been so utterly disrupted. The business models largely have remained the same. I believe that the time when we need to focus upon a smaller number of projects, that's what we needed to do, and that's exactly what we did simply because we needed to deal with the tasks that we never had had in the past, whereas previously we could uh, count upon the available solutions and the existing progress. Nowadays it is quite evident that we're cut off from such solutions, and some of our efforts, a significant share of our efforts, is being aimed at creating alternatives. I would put it this way. In the area of software solutions, I do not uh, see complicated pathways. This is the matter of time and the amount of efforts that we invest into. There are problems with the hardware, like uh, Max mentioned before me. So I wouldn't say that these are the things that can be resolved, but they are complex, and it all depends upon the government's ability overall, because not a single company is capable of uh, dealing with it. If the government establishes an effective uh, management over resolving these problems, I'm sure that we will overcome them as well. Now, the price that we may have to pay for it will be in the area of investments. We will uh, have to pay quite a material price for it, and of course, we will lose speed for a certain period of time. These are the drawbacks. Now, the advantages are that currently there is nobody that we can count upon. As always, it's a strong driver. Life forces us to be optimistic because there is no third alternative. Either you are optimistic or you uh, are being pushed aside towards the historical wasteland. So being optimistic is um, one of the um, professional charge in your amongst your cartridges, so you can't do really without it. So I think that we will need to work 
in a much more collaborative way in the IT sector in the first place, us all together, and the Ministry of Digital Com Communication, I see as a great coordinator, they really excelled, particularly during the crisis period, by joining us all together, whereby we started discussing many things together and tackling many things together. This is my first point. The second, I do not view positively the fact that the foreign vendors have left the market. No Russian company will be able to maintain the level of competition that we used to have. Being able to gain in a one-off way some sort of an asset uh, in an inexpensive way will be one-off uh, income for somebody, but long-term the economics shall lose because the density of competition will subside. And as we're saying, the main thing to develop innovation is competition because whenever, wherever there is no competition, there is no innovation. And so in this way, I believe that one of the most long-term negative consequences for the Russian economy is the fact that powerful foreign companies have left the Russian market. And it's not about losing some sort of solutions because under the pressure of situation, we will be forced to create comparable, in terms of quality, comparable solution. But the density of the competition is something that we really feel much easier, but longer term is going to be a problem. Uh, may I ask you an additional question here? Because, like you said, that for a certain period of time, the speed is what we're going to lose. And everyone is aware of it, but how are we not to lose quality? Because international competition really set a certain level for us to go for the better solution. So what happened has happened. And, um, I mean, our level of international competition in this particular sector has seriously gone down. So how, via internal competition, we can set up our sites and go for the best possible things that uh, are out there in the world. How we can do it? Well, look, my first question is, there's no way. You cannot do it artificially. Either you've got competition or you don't. The competition is always facing a choice to survive or to perish. If you have any easement or any artificial things, there is always a way to bypass it, so that won't work. Like uh, many years of attempts to force somebody to do innovation through an administrative leverage, that doesn't create anything good. There's only one response, competition, real market competition. Secondly, speaking about the international competition, in finance, honestly, uh, we uh, haven't been much uh, noticing it in the Russian market. Well, that was about the banks which are far from being the strongest ones and they continue being here. They never gave us a lot of headache. And to be honest, there are not too many benchmarks uh, out in the world that we would align ourselves with. We, we took a little from the experience of financial market, and I'm not of any high opinion of the competitiveness of foreign banks. In this sense, the Russian financial market is sufficiently developed. But as far as the technology companies, yes, these are the ones that we have been learning from. And the speed of our development over the previous years have been defined by us taking on the kind of experience that they had been growing over decades. And within about several five years, we've been able to implement it here, which brought about the speed and the quality in the development of the Russian financial sector amongst other industries. So in this sense, on the one hand, why not? going to be having ready-made solutions. But we have attained the kind of the development level when it won't really be possible to implement box solutions. We are now in the innovative stage of the development where the development pace cannot be as speedy, so we objectively, objectively will be developing slower. But now, if you ask me a question, what are we to do in order to not slow down, is to turn to the government and ask it in this 
difficult period to forget about its fears, because what's in the way, in our way, are the fears of the government, and specifically the regulator, the central bank, because the biggest decelerator is the regulatory impact upon the innovative market. And when the government starts, wherever the government starts to regulate something, the speed goes down. Now, speaking about the financial markets and very uh, prospective technology like blockchain, I would say Russia is losing its competitive advantage because of the regulatory restrictions. So the question is, what can be done during this period of time? And the answer is to allow business to develop these things and to, you know, keep slightly behind with one's regulatory portfolio so as to oversee and make sure that the development is uh, taking place. That's the good thing that the government can do, I believe. Thank you. Nevertheless, could you also say a few words about the digital solutions that have helped you, if there are any, or was it neutral. Well, sorry uh, for uh, being forgetful. Well, for me, I believe that we wouldn't have been able to survive because the kind of blow that we've been dealt throughout six months' time, we wouldn't have been able to survive if we were not to invest into such advanced technologies. So it's not about a question whether it helped us or it did not. We simply would have vanished. First of all, that's about a colossal blow that was uh, dealt to us because of being cut off from the international markets. And uh, secondly, they would have come after us to completely uh, annihilate us through the cyber attacks, unprecedented cyber attacks that have been taking place over the past six months. So I think that there is no alternative. And so in this sense, the Russian financial sector its advanced stage of development. I must say, I'm very much appreciative to the Central Bank, and it's very timely, very expedient, very agile and collaborative response enabled all of us to survive. Were they not one of these factors in place, I would say that we would have been completely dismantled if the financial sector was dismantled, the economics would have been showing us a totally remorseful picture. Well, thank you. There was a note of optimism in your uh, uh, narrative, although you are not uh, considering yourself being optimistic about if I heard you right. Financial sector has attained the kind of a level where it is not only capable of implementing solutions, but is also ready and capable to produce the required solutions. That definitely will take time, but from the quality point of view, that is really all right in terms of the future development. If that is the case, so let's hope that with the help of regulation, uh, we have a lot of uh, arguing about it, uh, but we do have ways to uh, create the conditions so that such solutions are being produced everywhere, including the financial companies. My question is to Andre Kosti. What's your recipe for survival? Please share this with us. And my immediate second question, please don't forget about it. Uh, you and German show different approaches to running your businesses. And when we had a debate about the ecosystem, may I remember a very hot topic before all of the crises broke out and we were considering different business models. There primarily is a closed uh, uh, in-house uh, ecosystem. You were trying to push uh, for the model-based, uh, partner-based, sorry. If you can go back, so would you believe that you would do it the same way? Because today we see that many partners simply see to perform. Some of them, even if uh, they were willing to, cannot, they're leaving. And that, this may directly impact B2B group. Maybe you would have felt much more safer having all of such functions in-house rather than trying to develop a partnership base model. So are you planning to reconsider your approach? Thank you very much, Elvira. You said that I've got a reputation of a person who is speaking things that others are afraid to say. But I must say, what a great central bank we have in this country, the public. And how great are the people in this really fearless team? 
There is no other central bank in the world, and I'm sure that it will win over all of the central banks in the Western countries. There is no doubt about it. Поэтому, а что не выжить -то с таким? So, can we not survive having such a central bank? But on a serious note, of course, any bank, first and foremost, depends upon the bank's customers. I'm always saying it to my colleagues who are taking offense that we are in the service sector. We're like a waiter. We must provide a speedy and profitable service to our customers because our survival depends upon them. So the first good news is that despite Everything that has occurred since February, our customers are alive and kicking. And actually, when we were making the forecast, and I know that the central banks had the same kind of expectations that in terms of some really tough sanctions, the GDP is going to plummet. That did not happen. I know that there is a bit of a delayed sanction impact. It will be there, but nevertheless, today we see that our customers are fully alive. And by the way, we do not uh, see any serious overdue statistics uh, the whole of the banking uh, service. We see that the level of lending is recovering, maybe not in the corporate sector, but in the consumer, small business, medium business sector. Things are recovering, and so we are able to enjoy having our customers in this country. And the second good thing is that the customers must come into our bank, and for that, irrespective all of the problems and difficulties. We ought to make sure that our customers continue to receive the new products that conform to the modern day of technology and the new needs that customers may have. And so in this sense, there are several, I believe, very important points, and that is that our bank, we started our transition. Within the import substitution towards uh, using our own products uh, since uh, 2019. So back in 2019, we had 90% dependence throughout all of the key categories in IT from foreign vendors. Today we've got less than half, and towards the end of 2024, we plan to practically, in terms of the key, the critical infrastructure, sorry, critical infrastructure is concerned to be 100% self-sufficient, and that, of course, enables us to develop today, and to a lesser extent, although I do agree with German, one shouldn't find anything good in the fact that the front companies has left, but amongst other things, that not only creates political safeguards in terms of doing business, but that also saves our money, because we made an estimate that within the three-year timeline, that would save us about 30 billion rubles, because we now produce these things ourselves, and we avoid paying these huge amounts of money that uh, have continued been charged to us by foreign suppliers. So this particular thing and the fact that we are agile enough to come up with the products that our customers accept, well, honestly speaking, our customers really haven't felt on their height all of these difficulties. Uh, I'm not talking about the external transfers. We couldn't develop these models outside of the country, but as far as the inside the country, things are concerned, whatever the banks were able to do themselves, enables us to maintain fully adequate service to our customers. We're not losing our customers. The customer traffic is coming to us. The customers are raising their investments. We expect a greater liquidity inflow because the uh, security is not, it is not stable. There is a bit of a trend like that. So in this sense, we believe that we have already survived. We believe that we have persevered through the first shock. That was really a hard one because we ended up being under the sanctions on the very first day, on the 24th. We were getting ready for that. But the date itself caught us unaware. We had to sustain certain losses. We had to reorganize ourselves in many ways. So I would say that the bank is 
alive. The bank is very positive in terms of its mood. We feel trust from our customers in the early of this forum. We did a bit of a survey amongst our customers in terms of the level of trust towards Russian technologies, and more than 60 percent voiced their support and trust. So we feel quite comfortable in this sense and believe that we'll be able to develop further, and we hope that we won't lag too much behind our colleagues, many of our customers who в страны, скажем, Transfer their money востока, into the countries на in the Orient, залив, они in говорят, the Gulf, <laughs> уровень обслуживания российского банка, of, uh, конечно, порядок выше uh, и по продуктам, и по технологиям, чем uh, они сегодня имеют даже в филиалах и каких-то отделениях даже иностранных банков западных. In, Поэтому the, я думаю, что мы вполне можем быть удовлетворены so здесь, can, хотя времена тяжелые, предстоит тяжело, и удар по нам был очень сильный. Что касается модели, вы знаете, мы всегда делали упор все-таки на банковскую деятельность. Мы никогда не ставили задач стать цифровой компанией. Правильно или неправильно, я не знаю, наверное, время покажет. Наша партнерская модель в общем была доведена до определенного уровня. Мы создали систему открытых протоколов обмена, так называемых, к которым наши партнеры могут подключаться, когда они захотят. Конечно, бремя Uh, вот, этой, вот этого слова не скажу, из трех букв, которое называется SDN, он определенной степени мешает этому партнерству, потому что многие компании, потенциальные партнеры относятся к очень осторожно с президентовским банком. Но я не хочу прогнозировать ситуацию, когда вся страна будет в СДН, и тогда проблема сама это уйдет. Я считаю, что постепенно мы будем выстраивать определенные отношения на базе именно партнерских отношений. Я не знаю, я пока у нас стратегия не менялась, темпы развития партнерства, конечно, замедлились. Но определенная сегодня находится в основном на лёд. Как дальше будет развиваться? Будет, будем you know, смотреть. Если поймем, really что наш модель неправильная и нужно, и нужно wrong, наверное, Но я все надеюсь, что мы сохраним это, и компании будут взаимодействовать потихоньку, собственно, и происходит, когда мы понимаем, что ну, и другие наши партнеры понимают, own, особенно российские, что русские банки не санкции, а работают с крупнейшими банками, что это не связано с партнеров, все равно нет have to because they won't have any other partner like that. Thank you. Спасибо. Я очень рада, что вы, кстати, начали с Какое-то время назад мы все говорили, банки должны стать клиентоориентированными. Сейчас даже это не нужно говорить, просто банки понимают, что клиентоориентированность – это главное, что позволяет развиваться бизнес. Правда, у нас здесь есть различия. Вы сказали, что надо клиент обслужить быстро, хорошо и дорого, а вы клиенты считают быстро, хорошо и лучше почувствовать дешевле. Но, тем не менее, действительно, I believe a speedy and expansive service to the customer. Otherwise, regulators believe that the service should be speedy and affordable. So it is important not to lose the pace at the same time. That is why we are talking about these things. My question is to Mikhail. Ростелеком is the biggest operator of the digital infrastructure in Russia. Занимается всем от цифра от сотовой связи, телевидения, до центров и вы обеспечиваете и непрерывность деятельности инфраструктуры, и одновременно развитие инфраструктуры для развития инфраструктуры. И мы видим, что запросы к Ростелекому возрастли во многих секторах выставки, но при этом можете ситуацию, ситуацию сейчас? Какие российские технологии нужно создать или развивать? Спасибо за вопрос. Это очень интересно. Спасибо за вопрос. 
Ну, монополистами не рождаются. Well, монополисты не рождаются. И каждый being... может найти какой-то голубой, голубой океан. Конечно, исторически из направлений, которые появились буквально за последние годы, и в общем, в значительной степени в конкурентной среде, потому что на рынке не только мы работаем, вот Герман является, несомненно, одним из лидеров в сфере информационной безопасности. Тоже есть очень сильные компании, на рынке это очень Мы всегда всех приглашаем к сотрудничеству с государством, Everyone to cooperate with the government in developing the government information system, but in the meantime, uh, regrettably, nobody's trying to join in. Actually, maybe because the government is very demanding, very tough, and uh, you know, doesn't let the money go easily. And so, uh, great and effective example of it. But it doesn't pose a lot of uh, things that we need to comply with and uh, we need to solve. Let me not uh, start uh, on this. But overall, uh, ourselves and our partners, and that's what I would like to specifically mention, have really prepared themselves well for these challenges which still remain. But including the hardware developers as well as those who develop software for the past 15 20 years covered a lot of ground. And so today, stability of Ross Telecom as the biggest digital operator is sufficient. A few words about partnership. I believe this is one of the biggest advantages that Russia and the Russian market has in many of its то uh, вот даже среди speaking about digitalization even amongst the companies and organizations that we represent there are great eloquent examples of joint work done in establishing strategic federal global solutions like Biometry, that is the joint venture between the government, the Ministry for Digital Development and the Central Bank and Ross Telecom. Together with VTB, we are the shareholders of the biggest data center market operators. Together with German and Spare, we're about to start, I feel, one of uh, the systemic projects when we will join to the Spare platform our solutions in the area of virtual. Digitalization. That would enable one to move forward faster, be more effective in spending because of course import substitution increases our spending. There are no wonders in nature. And so the price for this uh, kind of journey is And so speaking about the bottleneck, it's important to understand whether you pour out or you pour in. Да, спасибо. All right, thank you. Ну, про партнерство. Well, about могу, partnership, uh, cannot but say a word, because life forces one to partner with somebody else. Even if in the past uh, someone uh, was uh, adamant about being in partners with somebody else. Nowadays, it's really a trend. You know, to survive. My question is to say, okay, let's take a look, let's we'll come back, let's take a look at the current situation through the lens of a private bank. You may find yourselves, even in a much more complicated situation than the leaders of the banking sector, uh, I mean, in terms of the level of digitalization that you've reached so far, although you started uh, actively working on it and you set up a tech company, but also in terms of the scale of your business and uh, becoming the victim of really tough sanctions, so you've been confronted by a whole mass of problems. Now, do you believe that you've got some sort of a unique advantage compared with the government banks, which helps you to successfully continue uh, your digital transformation that you're currently pursuing, irrespective of the crisis? But honestly saying, in your question, there are so many assumptions that I would need to somehow argue around. 
because the previous speakers uh, were putting themselves into the camp of uh, optimistic or pessimist. Uh, and Gilmore is quite right in saying that he's a radical pessimist. Uh, and uh, so in this whole situation, I should say, we find it much simpler than many of uh, our peers. Uh, speaking about scale, you know, a, a problem of hardware um, as applicable to many big players, uh, really very hard because some things you simply cannot outsource. The very same Ross Telecom, in our case, certainly in an environment competing for resources, nevertheless, we have enough opportunities. Second thing, we do see that the projects which have been launched by the central bank in order for the many fintech infrastructures to become universal, rather than every bank would do something on its own, bear a lot of significance, and that is something that helps not the big banks in the first place, but to the smaller banks. Next in line, we are aware that from the point of view of the support measures that are being offered uh, to IT sector and the banking sector uh, currently uh, in the sense that our developers have been protected for certain obligations. This is a crucially important uh, thing, but uh, we, against all of this, see an increase of uh, the developers. Our HR churn uh, is much lower these days. And we're talking about the companies uh, that are not living the markets. We're not dealing with the startups who do not know about how they're going to be funded in the future. We are seeing a whole slew of support measures that define the future. We find it much easier today to recruit developers compared to the years in the past when some of our colleagues were really put it into the full swing, well, raise the pay uh, double, and then we would uh, find ourselves in a position where we can't find anybody. Right now, we feel ourselves much better off, and the timing for the technological leap is ideal. Now, what else? I think I should say that all of the projects in the area of innovation can be romantic and pragmatic. And so, respectively, there are certain things that really cool, look cool and others which generate hard profit. So we can afford to do both because in front of us, in the vanguard, there are uh, I would say uh, several very reputable players who can afford certain romantic things about let's try and do this, let's try and do that. It really looks nice. Certain things are being written off. Later on, some are not. So in the area of development, uh, you can't uh, speak about the expensive innovations that haven't applied and work. No, the expensive ones are only the ones that didn't take off and have been written off and do not generate any result. So we see our advantage and the fact that we can truly utilize the things that are being produced at the level of the government, that are being developed by our peers. Um, so we are highly appreciative in a certain way uh, to Germain and Sber because we do ascertain the kind of a change that over the several past years took place in its position also under the impact of the central bank uh, um, uh, impact. And we see the extent to which the central bank uh, services can be used by other banks as well as by spare banks. So they're a fintech. That's really great help. So I would say that there is a bit of uh, a balance that is currently uh, shaping up. We believe this is very positive. There is a whole number of other things because we are talking about the thing that uh, we're under the sanctions. Everybody knows about the drawbacks uh, related to it. But there are also various merits and advantages. If I will tell you about the drawbacks uh, of being in the shadowy side rather than on the sunny side of things, because currently you are uh, you cannot even specifically identify where is the sunny or the shadowy side. In terms of the competitive environment, we see that there are more opportunities as well as in business. I agree with Andre. The customers are alive. 
There are many customers around. So invariably, we are going to be moving towards not having the super, super coldest fintech in terms of the intensity of romantic projects, but the fact that we will have enough resources for everything that customers need and that we can do anything for them that would make them their usage of the bank system comfortable. We have a lot of reserve if you count the number of human resources that the banks expand on the projects, which are not really compulsory, which really don't generate any direct effect. This is just something that is in vogue. Thank God that we don't have such a growth of computational um, capacities uh, that we used to witness 20, 15 years ago. Currently, everything is working and functioning. So I believe that in terms of the cloud-based solutions, we would need to work with the legal environment in terms of finding it easy to do certain things in the cloud, maybe in some situations in terms of the cross-border clouds. Um, that may well uh, be something that we would need to think about in due course, of course, in several time, in several years' time. But overall, our industry, it won't feel the kind of bottlenecks uh, in developing BD, also in the hardware. Thank God that we're working with data and we don't need to insert this hardware into our products so as to make it physically go somewhere. I mean, what kind of difference you may imagine? In the bank machines, all right, the digital ruble will help us. We will give up on the bank machines. So, on the contrary, this is going to be driving everything that we're substituting. Of course, our customers may face much more powerful technology challenges. To be radically optimistic in some industries is, wouldn't help. You have to be a really tough, pragmatic uh, person. But in terms of our bank specifically, we don't have doubts about it. Thank you. It really gives me joy to see that you remain optimistic and pragmatic at the same time. There is no good without evil. Indeed, the uh, uh, playing field leveling up, uh, that is something that the central bank has always been trying to achieve. Maksud, let's go back to you. The Minister of Digital has done a lot for digital transformation in this country, but still, the pace of digitalization are quite different in different sectors. Somewhere they remain low. So what do you think? Should we strive towards a certain uniform pace of digital development? Should we? If we should, how are we to achieve it? It is evident that infrastructure solutions that you are trying to produce that can be employed in different sectors, they are well sought after in some sectors and others they are not. And while advanced financial sector advanced in terms of digitalization, is very much worried that we, if we are trying to make everybody look the same, like taking a medium temperature, there are the whole hospital, then we will be slowing ourselves down and not achieving just to really act like the middle runners do. So what kind of teacher you are if, uh, for example, you imagine yourself in a classroom where you're trying to make sure that all of your students are the same? Well, in, in speaking about this kind of a simile, I would like to say that the digital rockets in the financial industry that have been really taking off at great speed and each of them was flying in its own direction, uh, trying to rely upon its competitive advantages. I currently see that currently there is a huge collaboration taking place to us, the financial industry, which in all of the digital stories is acting like a great locomotive and whatever happening in the finance we will definitely be seeing taking place in other industries. I do say this is a very correct trend and so I would like to um, offer my thanks to all of our colleagues here on the panel and I'm appreciating that we're having this discussion when in a difficult period people are getting together, are trying to achieve something together, share their experience and uh, um, uh, helping commercial banks. And, uh, I believe this is a definitely kind of a positive outcome in the current environment which is so valuable. 
Yes, sir. Now, we do have national development goals, which uh, amongst it we have uh, digital transformation in uh, the five goals, and we have an indicator that the government is supposed to achieve, which is a digital maturity in the key industries. And so in this sense, of course, we're trying to measure digital maturity. And here we are measuring not the industries in between themselves, because uh, that, uh, to a certain extent, would have been simply uh, making everybody uh, stick to the same level. We're trying to use the best international benchmark. And so there are good news, two good news based on our indices. Um, the financial sector, financial industry is uh, far ahead, leading um, uh, compared to the international indicators. It is not when we are trying to compare the financial system with the economy, but the financial system with the level of digitalization, with the level of digitalization uh, of the global industry. And so here I do agree that uh, I suppose if we've got this difference, it's either a minimal one or uh, on many indicators, uh, the Russian financial industry and in its digitalization is um, at level with the best international practice. Uh, we've got a directive with respect to the government companies and the digital transformation strategy. There are certain uh, indicators uh, increasing the spending amongst them. And so with many government banks, we are having a debate um, I, I, that we need to pull off this indicator as a basic uh, requirement imposed upon them because uh, they demonstrate and the kind of the digital maturity that doesn't require gigantic investment. But at the same time, it is important for such experiments. <clears throat> um, essentially, uh, we understand that those who are preparing is going to win. But please, you should remain as uh, an experimental site because you've got to fall those trees down in order for everybody to really uh, go that way and shed enough light on it. Uh, so I don't uh, see the risk. We're not measuring this industry as uh, comparing it uh, to each other, uh, but uh, we're measuring ourselves against the international benchmarks. All right, I've got a practical question. Let's see. The financial sector may rely upon the government uh, continuing to develop the kind of an infrastructure which already complies with the level of maturity of the financial sector, which, as you have acknowledged, is higher than in other cases. But it's just that the need for the digital transformation at this level of maturity is quite uh, material. The infrastructure solutions that are required are, are of a different quality. And clearly, we as the central bank cannot do anything without the government in order to provide incentives uh, to this future development. So I hope that we can also count upon the collaboration that you referred to. Absolutely so. Um, even when we are talking about how the sectoral regulators should uh, cooperate with us, with the industry, uh, we always uh, uh, refer them to, as an example, to our system of relations with the central bank. Because you act as a consolidator of uh, requirements, we get this information from the central bank, from Olga. And so in terms of the government services, government data, and the market, we are doing everything we can in order to meet these needs. So customer centricity, in our case, is meeting the needs of the central bank. All right. And so on our part, we're going to generalize the needs of the financial marketplace and the banks as well. Now, continuing on the collaboration topic, which is indeed very important and many panelists referred to, and Maksud, uh, just before me, really underscore it. I fully agree with it. And so I have a question to our bankers, to each of you. You may recall that at last year's uh, uh, Finnapolis conferences, we often discussed those very important national infrastructure projects which can be used by all the market players and the ones which would make it possible to move along the digitalization journey and help develop uh, the digital profile, the payment system, SPP. Um, we discussed it. We even voted, I recall, for the most important project because um, to go after 10 projects simultaneously would mean that you won't be able to accomplish not a single of them. We also discussed not only the general projects, which could be of interest to the majority of the market players, but also there is commercial angles, and uh, the issue of competition has always been 
at the cornerstone place of it. And so in many ways, such national platforms that the commercial players have access to, we have been developing them with the help of a regulator. We had a lot of arguments with German when he was telling us that we are substituting market competition, but we nevertheless deemed it necessary to develop such platforms. Now, today, considering the fact that many are sighing and uh, demonstrating the readiness on the part of commercial players to collaborate, maybe it's high time to say that the businesses are themselves ready to create such commercial united platforms like the scoring platform, like the tokenized uh, cashless transfers so as not to run them through the central bank or the government entities, but to have united commercial platforms. Do you believe that such collaboration may happen? Now, who will be the first one to take the mic? Andre, yes, I'm ready to. Thank you. Yes, Elvira. There are different experiences throughout all of the past years when we remember such platforms being developed. I have an opinion that on the one hand there are such platforms where the government either in the person of uh, the central bank or any government agency ought to play the key role. And that can be explained by the fact that such platforms must enjoy the trust from the marketplace and the customer. And there are several examples about it. Each of us came forward uh, with some sort of a credit card option, but eventually the central bank came around, produced the mere b b card using central bank's resources as the basis. But before that, we had a platform, the bear had a platform, but it was decided, and I think it was correctly decided. Um, on behalf of all of the marketplace, but there are also other examples when creating the government-supported biometric systems. Uh, before that, myself and German proposed to the government our own solutions. They were quite advanced, but the government said, sorry, this is the kind of an infrastructure thing where uh, not the full control, but the government uh, um, the participation is required as a neutral participant, the kind that uh, will um, hold the trust of all of the users. So there used to be other cases when we united our efforts. That was the Bureau of the Credit Histories. We couldn't come to an agreement about having a single bureau, and we ended up having three eventually because the interest from uh, the market uh, players and uh, you know push them into a single structure would be difficult. And that is uh, how I think that it should remain. There are certain key infrastructure projects where the government is supposed to play the core activity and the core role, and there could be other infrastructure projects that the market players should establish on a competitive basis. And so uh, if you have something like that, it shouldn't be just a single entity, single bank. Uh, it should be uh, a competitive process like uh, with the credit uh, history. There are three agencies that uh, offer such a service. I believe it's going to be very difficult to agree on creating some very important structured thing using one commercial entity. Although, you know, we're all friends here, but, you know, customers are separate thing. German? No, uh, uh, well, speaking about the differences in the business models, I really do not uh, have a lot of faith in the regulator forcing somebody uh, doing something apart from a whip. But you can't do many things with a whip. You got to use certain other subtle mechanisms to find things, to fine tune things. But you nevertheless asked about the differences in the business model. If a customer wants to have speed, uh, good quality, 
and uh, expensive. They should go to Vitabi, but if they need speed, good quality, and not pay a lot of money, they should go to us. You don't need any regulation. Well, many customers are saying that they also deliver an expensive service. Well, then, then you can uh, have it then in uh, uh, inexpensively, uh, taking a lot of time and not uh, so much quality. Then you go to the central bank. Well, I mean, it's uh, easy for anybody to offend a regulator. But uh, to be serious, I do agree with Leonid at uh, certain points in time, it's not uh, easy for market players to come to an agreement, although crisis is the kind of thing that really leveled this uh, whole thing. And so right now we're much more collaborative and uh, we are eager to launch many programs together. And for several past weeks, we've been discussing many areas where we can create principally new product because it is really difficult to do it on your own and not profitable because it is important to make sure that everyone uses this product because that would lower down the cost for its development. Yes, at certain points in time, the government should help. I don't believe that the government long term may support competitiveness of such products. That is why. As soon as you establish something, you should, you should rather leave it either, either or, or, or the progress will stall. Of course, we understand that, uh, you know, it, it's painful. Uh, there's a whole bunch of managers come in and say that this is really a great thing. Some are saying that we are a hand that is laying down golden eggs. When you come up with 150 reasons uh, so as to not part with this monopoly, you know, Haig was saying that the this terrible monopoly is the government monopoly. So unfortunately, nothing has uh, changed over the past 100 years. So in response to the crisis, I feel competitiveness and innovation will manifest themselves in the following thing, whether in the Russian markets there will be new disruptive solutions in the financial industry. They may emerge only where you have the really tough competition and where and we have a big problem. Somehow, I am convinced that such solutions are going to appear because we've got really great guys working in the banking sector. And it's definite that we will come up with something. I don't know who will do that or what will appear, but I'm sure that such breakthroughs will happen. In this sense, you know, the Chinese are saying that crisis A is a problem and B is opportunity. And so in this sense, Russia is a big country of opportunities. Thank you. Yes, I understood that the only thing that the private monopoly should be afraid of is government monopoly. Sergei Vladimirovich. So what do you think? Well, we need to um, view both of these monopolies as the government ones. Uh, so a bit of a um, historical tour for you. Uh, this whole, you know, in very heated debate between the central bank and Spare Bank about that such services began uh, when Spare Bank um, inside it uh, had a prevalent idea that through a big part of the market at a, in a certain segment to create the kind of technology services which would lead them to enjoy you know big market uh, uh, share um, which uh, later on will be fenced in uh, with the barbed wire so that others won't enter. And so the central bank really did a lot in order to change this paradigm. And so, of course, looking at us as uh, commercial banks, I would say that if it wasn't for all the activities that the central bank instituted over the past few years, we wouldn't have been able to compete right now. That's a proven fact. On the other hand, on the other hand, we 
see that over the past several years that uh, this bad banks paradigm has gone through a radical change. Uh, it's a totally different approach to the openness of the services that are being offered. And so in this sense, it really pleases us to see that currently instead of monopoly, in many places we see a very healthy a parallel development of uh, various offerings. And so this idea of monopolization is not surviving anywhere anymore. But on the other hand, uh, like German, uh, we are afraid that in some segments this alternative monopoly may ensue, and that may not be a very good idea. But it seems to me that if we recall that all of the fintechs started not from retail, but from a different kind of a market segment, like the Moscow Exchange, it's a great example. The regulator really did a lot in order for the exchange to become one of the best. And at a certain point in time, it exited from this structure by letting a new powerful public market-based company continue. And I believe that in the central bank's portfolio, there are certain things that do not have to remain government-owned anymore. There is no acute need for it. And so the central bank can focus its efforts upon the most risky but important projects in terms of the technology sovereignty or to concentrate its attention in areas where without the central bank support you won't be able to overcome certain monopoly, but in areas where it's already functioning, where you don't have to apply any extra market mechanisms, it would be great for us to see some sort of a trend that it won't be an endless imperial growth, but uh, where you come in at a certain point, you do something important for the market, and then you exit from the function which is not really something that the regulator should be bubbled in. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. This is a very important thing. I do also think that the infrastructure, and that's not only goes for the financial sector and not only for the central bank, but for the government generally, because if we do something and if we promote innovative development, uh, not to sit in endlessly, but to really uh, be thinking about how to exit from it. We haven't got much time left, um, so I would like to do a bit of a blitz uh, quiz. Um, uh, our session is how do we keep the pace? Yes, everybody acknowledges that we have been able to reach a very high level of development. Let me not run the uh, list of the kind of conditions that we're currently under. But what is the most important thing for us not to lose this space? Sergei, let's begin with you, by order. I believe the most important thing um, to really demand a lot from the government banks in terms of profitability so that they should be competing for making making profits, the private banks as well. The willingness to earn profit uh, will definitely create the same kind of condition that would be conducive for the competition and would help. Uh, sufficient financial stimuli and the private initiative uh, can easily support high level of development. Maksud, I believe that it is very important for us to, to maintain uh, the broad trust towards uh, this industry. If it is there, uh, then the result will uh, come as well. So I would say that we can do anything, but the most important thing for people to have faith in us and to help everyone help us move into the future. You know, yesterday I was on a business trip and I was asked, do we see some kind of uh, characteristics of the end of the crisis? And I responded by saying that, no, we can't see it because of a simple reason that the end always comes unnoticed and always from behind. That is why we don't see it. So essentially, in the kind of crisis that we're currently in, we may not be yet fully aware and, and, and the kind of losses, all of the losses that we have had to incur, and many others that are capable of doing the proper work. So I believe that one should focus upon protecting the interests of children and the senior citizens and those who are not able to fend for themselves, while as far as the rest of the people are concerned, that really is an enormous gift. We cannot understand it. There is a motivation to live, to create, to design, 
because the motivation which is mixed with our conditional reflexes is a great thing. Life has become much more eloquent, bright and interesting and exciting. And it looks like over the next few years, this excitement is going to become just bigger. But in terms of what Mark Sood mentioned, I do say it is very important indeed. The crisis has put a spotlight both on drawbacks and uh, advantages, both uh, in terms of uh, individuals and companies. The most valuable thing that we can state that we are having right now is the level of trust is much higher. And I believe that the central bank has done a really decent job throughout this period. Quick, proper decisions made, as we can now witness, and on a collaborative side of things that really raised faith from those representing the sector because everybody had to face one big problem, common problem. And it seems to me that the government within this period of time has been able to demonstrate great efficiency. Things that they have been trying to put into functioning, the models uh, and controls and management solutions have produced results. Many longer-term things will definitely deliver, but that would take some time. So if you take a look at the cross-section of things currently taking place, as Jan Zemin said, the consequence of the great bourgeois French Revolution, uh, something that uh, is impossible to assess uh, uh, completely because not much time has gone since then, so to assess all of the consequences of what is currently taking place would be impossible. But I'm sure that there's a whole spectrum of advantages that our brain is not yet able to fathom because we have paid a big price for it. But life has become much more interesting, 100%, I'm sure of that. Yes, uh, I do agree that maybe uh, those uh, who couldn't previously had to make it out of the comfort zone. Well, dear friends, trying to answer this question, I believe that we need to move faster and to decide faster. That's what the time is demanding, and that applies both to the public and the private areas. We must invest more actively into infrastructure, into the search for new solutions and products, and not fear this, because both the country and the companies have accumulated uh, quite uh, a resilience, and the fact that we've been investing a lot over the past few years has created this foundation underneath this stability. And of course, we need to pay much more attention to supporting our people and grow our investments into human beings. That is a necessary prerequisite. So overall, I would say that we are being quite optimistic and we are looking at things in the same way. Andre, well, I don't know what about the pace uh, amongst others, but since 20, February 24, we've been going at such a speed, like I don't remember, I know, for the past decade. But the problem is, this was the period whereby uh, we've been 70% more involved in trying to find the solution to the problems that we had to face as a result of all of these crisis things. And only 30% of our time we were able to dedicate to creating new infrastructure, new uh, projects, uh, um, taking into account the new global picture that we are currently facing. So I, need, we, I think we need to change this proportion. We need to retain some time and effort in order to uh, completely regulate the issues that we continue to face, but to focus more upon dealing with the kind of the key problems without the solution to which this country's economy won't be able to survive. And apart from technology, this is about international payments and settlements and very important topic to make sure that the financial market recovers on a new foundation. But in terms of technology, um, I would ask Mark Sud to go back to the issue of making IT people equal with the banking people. Now, since you've uh, 
so highly appreciated the work done by the bankers. I believe that the banks will really pull their uh, things to, uh, efforts together, and they will send you a respective uh, letter, uh, because it's not really fair if you are saying that we are uh, doing a lot, then you should think uh, about making them in status equal to the IT people, uh, because the banks really were not uh, very much liking uh, lending to startups. The Russian venture company really got uh, boggled in the criminal uh, persecution. Uh, <coughs> we are working with Skolka, but many projects have disappeared because they were being done. Uh, using Western-sponsored money, um, um, but without it, people are not able to develop, and we're not lending because if you so, one should think uh, in terms of regulatory regulatory support, because if somebody is saying that we must not be lagging behind, this is the sector that really deserves being looked into as well. Thank you so much. Well, the time for our session is uh, coming up, and so uh, summarizing, let me begin with the last uh, question. How are we not to lose pace? There is no magic wand. Uh, there is not a single thing that will help us, and I agree with everybody and with all of the things that have been mentioned. Trust is important. I'm trying to make sure that profit continues to be generated that we need to resort to the opportunities that have emerged. Pay attention not only to the threats and risks. Uh, of course, the current environment uh, deserves being very cognizant of the risks, but not to be forgetful about the opportunities and the future and the startups and the financial sector. So all of such measures, of course, we're going to be resorting to and producing as we go. But it is also very important for the motivation towards such innovative work to remain. And amongst our panelists, as I know, we've got a bit of a spectrum from cautious optimism to radical optimism. Following the words of one of uh, the panelists, it would be great to have more of such panelists outside of this panel today. And so what it seems to me, this panel should not be simply just crying out loud from the rooftops. It should be an honest, sincere look at things. And I do feel it here because we understand the kind of difficulties that we're going through. But there is also an understanding of us not being able to let the advantage go. So the main driver behind us is to preserve competitive environment, preserve our results-oriented work. I agree with German. Competition is very important. But partnership and collaboration are the things that could attain a much higher level, I feel. Maybe not everything is uh, so well, but our need for collaboration happens during the crisis. For example, I noticed it in February. This time, all of the banks, I may even say, worked together in a very friendly way. There were much fewer cases of stealing customers. So during this period of time, the banks demonstrated great responsibility, demonstrated their drive towards collaboration. But once the profits started recovering, the inclination towards collaborating also started dissipating. So this ability to compete and to cooperate is where we haven't yet found the correct balance. And that is why, to a certain extent, we as a regulator are ready to act as a mediator for this collaboration. And this is something that I would say in an environment where we would need to unite efforts, not only to fund new innovations, but when you, all of you have competent teams, some have a competency in this, others in a different thing, but without collaboration in the financial sector, we would hardly be able to produce the kind of products that would ensure that we don't lose this space. And this is something that we all have to work over together. So I wish you all to enjoy success as innovation and not lose motivation. Thank you so much. Thank you.